Hi, my name is Dave Olson, and I am the Vice President of Business and Legal Affairs for Alfred Publishing, uh, whose office is here in Van Nuys, California. And we're in their executive conference room today, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, the sheet music business, I think. My career and my background is, uh, is pretty uh, long-winded. I started piano lessons uh, at the age of five and um, studied with a private teacher for uh, about seven years. And um, at the same time, um, when I start, got into junior high school, seventh grade, uh, I signed up for band. And the band director, um, recognizing the fact that I had some musical knowledge and, had, and could play the piano a little bit, um, gave me a French horn. And he said the reason he gave that to me was because I would have a, already have a, a concept of pitch uh, from playing the piano, and the French horn was a very difficult instrument to play, uh, to play uh, from an intonation standpoint. So he gave me a French horn, and I played the French horn uh, for the next six years, uh, all through junior high school and high school. Uh, continued to play it through college. In fact, it was my principal instrument in college. Uh, and then did some uh, community band and semi-pro and professional work uh, playing the horn. Uh, I do not play the horn anymore, unfortunately. I um, had to sell it for moving expenses at some point in my career, so, but we, we'll get into that. Um, like I said, uh, high school band was very beneficial, uh, also in the jazz band playing the piano, and off and on singing in, uh, in various choruses, uh, on the on the choir side of the of the music building, and um, studied uh, uh, originally went to college at North Texas State University uh, as a result of a Sammy Nestico record that I heard of the uh, NTSU Nine O'clock Jazz Band playing some pretty unique uh, Nestico uh, big band charts that ha also were expanded to include uh, a woodwind section, an orchestral woodwind section, a flute clarinet, oboe, and uh, bassoon and French horn. They were expanded charts, and those fascinated me. Uh, and so I went off to Texas to chase my, uh, my musical dream and ended up coming back to Miami, uh, where I grew up and was educated, um, and the University of Miami, uh, and enrolled in Dr. Alfred Reed's uh, music merchandising program. And that's what it was called at, at that time in the, in the, uh, in the, the mid-'70s. And uh, had a great experience there. Um, studied from the uh, Bill Krasilovsky, This Business of Music uh, book, which is published by Billboard. Um, and I'm flattered at this stage in my career that, uh, Mr. Uh, that, that Bill Krasilovsky actually sends me uh, drafts of certain sections of the books when he's writing updates and asks me for comments. I'm sure he does that with a lot of other people in the business, too. But uh, it's quite an honor to, uh, to be doing that. Um, from the University of Miami, I went on to um, the Wurlitzer Piano Company in DeKalb, Illinois, um, where I was um, hired to work in their music education division. At the time, Wurlitzer was one of two companies that was manufacturing electronic piano uh, laboratories that were sold to schools and to teach class piano um, because uh, anybody that goes through uh, say a music education discipline uh, at college, if you if piano isn't your principal instrument, you're required uh, piano proficiency. And the colleges especially figured out it was a lot better to teach 24 kids at one time than it was to teach you know teach them one at a time. Uh, and so the class piano lab was a way that um, the proficiency uh, requirements could be met in group fashion. And Wurlitzer was a uh, was a pioneer in that. A fellow named Lou Hollingsworth was very instrumental in creating the whole concept of the class piano lab, uh, and I was fortunate. Uh, Lou was the person that interviewed me um, and was the person that hired me and was one of my first uh, mentors uh, in the music business. Um, ironically, I got a chance to, uh, to actually publish some of his music once I left uh, the Wurlitzer company after about six and a half years. I didn't actually leave. Uh, they sold their educational products division at the time to another company. Uh, I was offered a job with the new company. They were based out of Minnesota. And my wife and I, being from Miami, decided we didn't need to move further north. 
Uh, we'd had enough of the cold, so we retreated to Miami. And it was Lou Hollingsworth who actually set up an interview for me with a fellow named Frank Hackinson, who at the time was the uh, general manager of Columbia Pictures Publications. Uh, and he offered me a job, uh, and I worked, uh, went to work for him. Columbia Pictures Publications evolved into um, <clears throat> a company called CPP Bellwin as a result of the uh, acquisition of the Bellwin Mills Publishing Company by Columbia. Uh, they put us together, and then they spun us off, and we were an independently owned uh, company for a while. Uh, and then in 1994, Warner Brothers, who had their own publish, uh, sheet music publishing operation in Secaucus, New Jersey, came along and bought CPP Bellwin, based in Miami, and then shut down their New Jersey facility and moved everybody south, uh, and we became Warner Brothers Publications. And that had about a 12-year run, until about a year ago, uh, when the Warner Music Group decided that they didn't need to be in ancillary businesses. They wanted to focus on their core business, so they spun off their, uh, their record and video, CD record video duplicating company, and they spun off the print company. And we landed uh, here in Van Nuys, California, uh, with the good people at Alfred Publishing. So that's, uh, that's how I got here.